Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Flying Cat Marketing Interview Series. I'm Maiva C. Fuentes. This is Buddy the Flying Cat, and we are your hosts for this interview series today. Um, uh, today I'm talking to Italo Viale, who's the co-founder of Outreach Humans. Uh, in another episode, we had his other co-founder, Jake Stainer, and they are a SEO link building agency for SaaS companies. So today we're going to be talking about link building, how to know what content to link to and how to set up a link building strategy, why link building is so, so, so important for your SEO strategy. So I hope that you enjoy this episode as much as I enjoyed speaking to him. If you did like it, please like it. It, leave a comment, share, share with your friends and colleagues. Anyway, I'll just get right into it and dive in. Enjoy. Hello, and welcome to the Flying Cat Marketing Interview Series. Today, I'm very excited about my guest, who is Italo Viale, co-founder of Outreach Humans. We've had the other co-founder already on, and this is just a reminder, an SE off, off-page SEO link building agency for B2B SaaS companies. Uh, we have known each other over the internet <laughs> for yeah, yeah, yeah. now. Um, so I feel like I feel like we're friends. We never met in person yet, but I think I feel it coming soon. Thank you for joining us today, Taro. Well, thank you. Thank you a lot for having me. And we're definitely online friends already. So it's amazing that we're in the same city. Definitely when we see each other, we're gonna be Real friends, for sure. Yes. <laughs> uh, cool. So why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, you and your background in off-page yeah. SEO or SEO in general? Yeah, for sure. So, okay, Outreach Humans, uh, it's my first uh, company, my first fun company, right? So the last four years, I was working on a 360 SEO agency called Big Sale. And uh, for the last two years, I actually was the CEO of Big Sale, and I helped grow the company, move to new markets, like we are in Latin, they are in Latin America now, and uh, really like structure the whole sales process, right? During this sales process and this whole restructuring, I met Jake, as you mentioned, my other co-founder, and we really clicked, like you and me, we really clicked, and one day uh, we were at the gym, actually, uh, near Travel Perks office, and we said, hey, why don't we do something regarding SEO that's very niche, very focused, but that has high impact. And after thinking a bit a bit about it, we decided that link building was that, right? So that's how Outreach Humans really um, was created. Actually, we, I did an article on Outreach Humans that's called How Outreach Humans Were Born. If you could take a look at it, I think you, you will find it interesting. Um, yeah, so now we are six months in on, on the venture. We are growing pretty steady. And the whole idea, and I think the whole reason why we're growing so much is because we're really niche focused, right? So we focus on B2B SaaS uh, link building. That's a very specific link building strategy. And we focus on doing link building just with high quality websites, right? So when we did this, sorry that I'm talking so much about us, but um, I'm excited to talk about our humans, right? Because the link building that we do is uh, pretty it's pretty hard in the sense that we actually implement a account-based approach, right? So we really target or outreach to real um, brands, other SaaS brands, and we try to get a partnership with them. And from this, we create high-quality high content published on the partner website and then link back to our clients. So basically, what we created for what we aim to create is like a value-led loop, right? So we give the partner uh, value, we give our clients value, and then everybody gives value to us, and we just like create this value loop, right? So that's, that's a bit about me. Amazing. I love it. And link building is obviously one of the most important things in SEO. Um, tell me, how exactly does link building work? Let's say I'm, I'm, I'm asking from the position of a, of a beginner. I'm, I'm assuming that some people might not know what link building is. Why is it so important? Yeah. So link building is still, yeah, it's still a, a one top rank factor for Google, right? Why? Because it basically indicates Google uh, what websites have the authority in what topic, right? So basically it's not the same just publishing a, a, um, a content piece on your website, but if nobody's talking about it, and when I mean talking about it in Google's eyes, it's other authoritative websites on the same niche linking back to it, 
these are signals for Google that, hey, maybe this content is authoritative. Maybe we should rank it up because it will um, satisfy the user intent. Right? So basically, link building in very essential form is a way of telling Google that your content is relevant for the users. Right? So you do this by getting other websites that are also relevant in your niche or in the context of the content to link back to you. Right? And of course, the important thing is that this website need to be also authority themselves, right? It's not like, it's not the same getting a link from Typhoon's blog than a link from my own blog that I have like two posts there, right? So that's a bit of difference. Why? Because the authority of Typhoon will be in a way transmitted to your content. And that's why Google will say, okay, this is very good. We should rank it up. Yeah. So how should a, a company, let's say if I have a brand new website, how should I start? Where should I direct the links to? Okay, that's a very good question. So uh, a big mistake that some companies do when they start link building campaigns is that they link everything to their homepage, right? And they leave, they leave the content uh, aside and they don't link anything to the content. The thing that you need, we need to understand is that page rank, that's what I was talking before, page rank flows on a page level, not a domain level, right? So if you're a new company and you're creating content, you should divide your efforts in linking back to your homepage, but also linking back to your content specifically with anchors that really target the keywords that you want to rank on, right? So it's better to go for quality than quantity. Even if you're starting, from our point of view, how our resume values link building, we should focus on quantity first, uh, sorry, on quality first and quantity, right? So if you only have the resources to do five links uh, with high quality websites, send two to your homepage and three to your content that, it, that is actually going to drive up signups, right? In the end, uh, this is also part of how we see it. Link building is just one other tool in order to generate business uh, results, right? So you have a content that generates signups. You want to rank it. So you do links to rank it up and get more signups. The, the, game, the end game is always going to be the business metrics, right? So this is the third variable that you need to like consider. Is this content worth linking to because it's going to generate business or not, right? Especially on the, on the first phases of the business, right? Like you need to gain traction. All your efforts need to be efficiently um, thought, right? So that would be it, yeah. So um, is it not worth it then to drive links to top of the funnel content, which isn't going to immediately drive business? Yeah, I mean, but you need to like, agree. No, no, yeah, yeah, definitely it will, no? that's why you wrote it. Even though it's top of the funnel, it has, a, it has a business purpose, right? Like for sure, if you analyze the conversion rates of the, your whole funnel, you're gonna have different conversion rates and you can analyze what's the difficulty of positioning each piece of content on each funnel stage regarding how much business it's gonna generate for you, right? So then you can create like a scoring system uh, and that's what we actually do. We see, okay, you have these 10 pieces of content. How many links do you need for each piece of content in order to position on top three? But what's the difficulty? What's the competition? What's the traffic potential? And then we generate like a scoring system where we say, okay, these are your quick wins, your mid midterm wins and your long-term wins, right? And then we go in depth in, in regards if this is top of the funnel, middle of the funnel, just bottom of the funnel, right? When I say link, to assets that will generate business, I don't mean only part of the funnel. Yeah, yeah. Definitely, you have to link to the whole comprehensive uh, funnel. Yeah. And when you're linking, do the anchor texts all have to be the same? And for those who don't know what anchor text is, it's the, the basically the text that is linking. <laughs> I'm not describing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's the words used. Um, oh no, sorry, I just got noticed that the meeting will end in 10 minutes. Um, yeah, sure. Okay. okay. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, it's definitely important to analyze the ratio of anchors, right? Like I said uh, before, if you're, gonna, uh, if you're trying to rank a page regarding one main keyword, you need to link to that page with anchors or like, uh, that are related to, my, to that main keyword. Okay? Not just exact match, but also like a long tail variations of it. Right. One thing that is important is that you should analyze the top 10 results uh, for that keyword, see what's the ratio of exact match and non-exact match, right? Because the problem here is that if you only do exact match, you could tell, you could, 
this is like a sign for Google that you are doing link building, right? So that's why you need to like, like change it up a bit now and then. Right? Okay. But definitely, they need to be related in some way. Even if they are super long tail keywords, they need to be relevant to the content. And what's more interesting, if I get a bunch of links, high quality links from a relevant website with a high domain authority, but all like, let's say I have all of my links are coming from type form. Is it better to have a diverse portfolio of links or how should you focus where to get links from? Definitely it's good to have a portfolio approach inside your mark, your industry, right? Like you could get 1000 links from type form, but really only you're just getting one referring domain, right? So yeah, I, did, I think I didn't explain this. There's links and there's referring domains. So basically what you need to analyze are referring domains. Even though you get 1,000 links from Typhoon, it really just counts as one, right? So from that, uh, from that end, yeah, you should definitely take a portfolio approach always inside your industry because the context around the link you get has also to be relevant to your piece of content, right? Because Google analyzes the context of the link and sees what surrounds the link and then drives that, uh, let's call it page rank to your content. Yeah, so it has to be relevant, yeah. So if, if I'm a company and I say, okay, I'm gonna hire outreach humans. I want, I have a brand new website, brand new SaaS company. Nobody knows who I am, but I have an amazing product. What are the next steps? Oh, I also already well, have to create content, let's say. I have content. Ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the first step, right? As you, as you, as you well know. Okay, so the next steps would be to analyze this content, um, to analyze in any way, what is the keywords that are driving more conversions, right? Even if, if the content itself hasn't generated organic conversion, but you're doing PPC, we could take this data and extrapolate it to uh, modeling your, your SEO model, basically, because that's what we do. So from that, we can tell you, hey, this is what you need to focus. This is the amount of links that you need. And this is the, basically the cost and the return investment, right? Because one thing that we do, we always link every proposal, every uh, strategy uh, back to return on investment. How do you calculate that from link building? Well, that's a bit of our secret, right? Uh, we do this model. <laughs> We do, we do the model, we do the model and we project how, how long is it going to take for, like if the status quo stays the same, how long is it going to take from our link building efforts to run to top three, let's say. And then when you are in top three, how many signups are we going to generate from that? From the data that you provided before, basically. Yeah. That's like a quick summary that I yeah, want. Yeah. I don't want you to reveal your industry, industry secrets. Uh, <laughs> on the video. Um, so what if you get a client who wants to rank a piece of content and the content's not good? Okay, first you need to fix the, the content, right? Like link building, it's basically an asset generating strategy. You create assets on your website and you create assets on the partner's website, right? Both assets have to be good. They have to be optimized and have to be high quality. So if the asset that the client wants to link to and want to run for is not good, it will never or very difficultly rank even if we put 100 links for it. So the first step is saying, hey, you want to run this? Okay, but you need to optimize it first. Take a look at top 10, hire a content expert like uh, Flying Cat and get them to optimize the content and then start the link building efforts. Yeah. What tool do you Definitely. guys use? We use ClearScope. What? Clear, ClearScope. ClearScope for, for keyword yeah, research. Yeah. Ah, no, no, no. For, no, no, no. When someone asks us to optimize the content for keyword oh. research, we use HRS. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We love HRS because it's basically HRS was a, it's a tool built behind backlink data, right? So it's very, very yeah, ad hoc to our industry. Do you find um, do you find that the recommendations they make are correct? Because when you look at the keyword difficulty score, it says you're going to need this many backlinks to make it to the first page of Google, for example. But I have ranked posts on the first page of Google in the top five without as many links as they recommend. That's a great question. This is very, something very interesting that we're analyzing with uh, Jake, actually. Because the thing is that href recommends a number of links based on a simple add and then divide, right? But as I said before, uh, not all links are the same, 
basically, right? So maybe one, maybe position three has 100 links, but really relevant, high quality contextual links are only 10. So you maybe only need 10. And this is part of the analysis we do. Yeah, we do, we do not just base it on what Ahrefs said. We go and we look, okay, this is, doesn't look really good because maybe there's one website that has 300 links. So it's really affecting the calculation of difficulty level, right? So you should always dig in a bit more in order to really understand how much you need. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Cool. Um, is, there any, is there any knowledge about link building that you feel is totally wrong? Like a common, a common thing that a, a lot of people say about link building that you guys have found to be different? I think one of the major things, is maybe not a misconception, but oh yeah, it's, it is a misconception. I have, have clients or people tell me, ah, you only do just link building or you guys are just doing link building, right? And I think it's a misconception in regards to how um, important link building is to the whole SEO efforts, right? Like you could create, and correct me if I'm wrong, you are an expert on this, you could create amazing content, but if you don't get people talking about it and link to it, it's really just lost in the internet, right? And then uh, from the approach that we do with link building is uh, really like, we try to do everything high quality. We don't go to, form, to link forms, or we don't go to platform to just buy the links because that's an idea that a lot of people have. Ah, but you're just gonna go to, I don't know, another platform, purchase the links and tell that you got the links, right? That's the, that's the main thing. I think link forms really affected the, um, like the idea of link building or yeah, basically what link building is. Yeah. So that's a misconception I think a lot of people get. Like, are they useful? They might, they might be useful in the short term, but I'm, Pretty sure they are not useful in the long term mm -hmm. yeah, because they Google could probably hurt you. Like, sorry. I said they could probably hurt you in the long term, right? Those yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and or Google's just gonna like, yeah, this is a link farm. I'm not gonna count it on your authority score. Yeah. Yeah, I think that that's important to understand that SEO is really holistic. You need a lot of different things about it, like we do on page SEO, and then my clients are okay. Well, I want some links too, and I say, okay, well, we're not gonna pretend to do that, we're gonna work with you guys uh, or a partner that can get these these high quality links back to the blog post. And then, you know, there's there's these various aspects of SEO that make it actually work well. It's, yeah, you can create great content, but if it's not optimized, if it's not distributed, if it's not linked back to, then it's not gonna work. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely is more than just, uh just like a straightforward thing, right? It's definitely more than Joe's. Like I've seen clients tell me, but, but I have Joe's and it says it's good. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah. those things hurt our industry, right? But yeah. All right, well, thank you so much for joining me today. Where can people find you if they want to connect with you? So they can find me at LinkedIn, Italo Viale, or at outreachunas.com for sure. Outreachunas.com and LinkedIn. And I will also be linking tagging you in this. Thank you so Great, much. Okay. It's been a pleasure to thank speak you, with Maeve. you. And uh, thank you for watching everybody and see you at the Thanks. next one. Bye everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Flying Cat Marketing Series. If you enjoy this interview, please give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues and subscribe to this channel. Stay tuned because next week I'll be interviewing another leader in the SaaS and startup world talking about their challenges and achievements. See you there.